Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wuryawan and today we're going to talk about this little guy right here, the Panasonic LX100. Let's go! <laughs> Now before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back. I hope you will enjoy this video and thank you always for your support. If you are a new viewer of my channel, also welcome. I hope that you will also enjoy this video. If you are into photography, filmmaking, micro forted cameras and lenses. Also if you are into music, home recording, guitar, rock metal, that kind of stuff. Please consider subscribing to my channel, I make those kind of contents for you. And now let's continue with today's video. So today we're going to talk about this little guy right here. This is the Panasonic LX100. So this is a small camera with built-in lens that's using micro forted sensor. And this is a prosumer kind of camera like the Sony RX100 if you ever heard of that camera. So what makes the LX100 a little bit different from the other prosumer kind of compact camera is the fact that it's using micro portraits 4x3 aspect ratio sensor. So it's slightly bigger when compared to the 1 inch sensor that's being used on the Sony RX100. So you can potentially get a better background blur when using this camera as well as a little bit better performance in lower light situation. This camera was released in 2016 and it's aimed at pro consumer enthusiasts, people like me. And what I really like from this camera is the fact that it has dedicated dials for manual control, exposure compensation dial, shutter speed dial, and also aperture ring. This is really an excellent enthusiast camera in my opinion. When it comes to still photography, it's shooting 12 megapixel. Originally, it is shooting 16 megapixel on the sensor, but it's cropping a little bit to accommodate for the multi aspect ratio kind of aspect of this camera. So you can choose your aspect ratio before you shoot the picture and that's cropping a little bit into the sensor. And when it comes to video, it's actually shooting 4K. It's one of the first cameras that shoots 4K, especially for a prosumer kind of compact camera. And the image quality is really good. If you are watching my older videos from my YouTube channel, then some of them are actually recorded using this camera back in 2016, 2017. Now I wanna talk a little bit about why I bought this camera on the first place. Originally, I bought this camera in 2016, a few years after it's being launched. And the reason why I bought this is because I want to have a little travel camera that is smaller than my main Micro Four Thirds camera, which is GX8 at that time and also my Panasonic GX7. So this is quite a bit smaller compared to the GX8 and the image quality, although it's not as good as the GX8 in my opinion, it is still more than good enough for my needs. And because it is small and lightweight and uh, very uh, easy to carry around, it makes it a really great travel camera. After a few months of using this camera for travel, then I started to realize that this is also a great everyday kind of camera. This is small, but it still has a lot of manual controls and a good enough image quality, although it is not as good as my dedicated micro footage camera. And I can just put it inside my work bag and photograph or film anything that I might require on the go. And then when I start to learn about uh, filmmaking and recording video, this camera really helps a lot. I use this camera a lot for recording b-roll clips as well as some of a talking head like this using an external recorder. It's just sad that this camera doesn't come with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack so that I can use my proper microphone. But anyway, I can still use this camera to record b-roll clips. Last but not least, some of you might already know that I do off-camera flash photography for especially environmental portrait. And this camera really shines when it comes to off-camera flash photography or strobes because it's using leaf shutter so, and it also has a proper hot shoe so that I can use an external flash or a wireless trigger for my flash that I put off-camera and I can use a high enough shutter speed like one one thousand of a second to really control my uh, background ambient uh, exposure so that I can get better result 
on my off-camera flash photography. Now, I want to quickly talk about some pros of the LX100. First, it is a great casual travel camera. It is pretty small, it is pretty lightweight, easy to carry around, and you know, it makes it really easy when it comes to travel. If you don't really need something specific like a proper dedicated interchangeable lens camera, then this is a pretty good solution for travel. Next pro is image quality. Although the LX100 cannot produce image quality that is uh, as good as my proper dedicated mirrorless micro four thirds camera, it is still more than good enough for my needs. So for casual kind of needs, for, you know, just on the go kind of a uh, run and gun situation, this is the perfect camera for that. Now, when it comes to video image quality, however, this is really good. I can say that it is almost as good as my GX8 or the G85 that's currently recording this video right now. The video coming out from this camera is very crisp, it's very detailed, and it uh, although it doesn't have any lock color profile or very flat color profile, uh, you can still uh, have a pretty good, decent enough uh, image quality when it comes to video. And I really enjoy using this camera for recording B-roll. Other thing that I should mention, uh, also related to image quality, is the lens. The lens is actually a 24 to 75 millimeter equivalent lens on full frame, and the aperture goes all the way to f1.7 at about 24 millimeter, and it goes to 2.8 at about 70 millimeter. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good when it comes to low light situation as well as to get background blur. Last but not least, lift shutter. As I mentioned earlier with off-camera flash photography, it really helps me a lot to control my ambience exposure, especially when uh, it is bright and sunny, and I want to make sure that the ambient doesn't overpower my subject that's being lit by flash. So if you're doing a lot of off-camera flash photography, then you will really appreciate this camera. But even though you don't really do off-camera flash photography, this is still a good camera for you for travel or for everyday run and gun kind of situation. Now that we've talked about things that I like from the LX100, I also want to be fair and talk about some negative points about the LX100. First negative point is weather sealing. This camera doesn't have any weather sealing. So if you're planning to use this camera during light drizzle, shower, or rain, then uh, I don't recommend you to do that because it might damage the camera. Next negative point is stabilization. When it comes to still photography, it is okay. The stabilization, it's not mind blowing or anything. It will get the job done. But when it comes to video, if you want to do any kind of movement with the LX100, then you will have problem. The videos will become jerky, the movement will not become smooth, and I think you will need either a tripod or be stationary or use gimbal if you plan to make a lot of movement uh, when recording video with this camera. Next negative point is autofocus. Autofocus on this camera for still photography and video is actually quite quick and fast and snappy, just like my other micro four thirds camera, the GX8 and the G85. However, sometimes I will notice that uh, after I'm taking the picture, when I check into the screen, sometimes my subject is not in focus. It happens quite frequently and I'm frustrated by it. And after a little bit of research and experimentation, I found out that if you switch the autofocus mode to macro, it will help to mitigate the problem better. It will not be gone completely. Sometimes it will still miss focus, but it reduces the chance of miss focus quite significantly. So uh, switch to autofocus macro. There's a switcher right here if you have this camera. And although the autofocus will be a little bit slower, it'll be more accurate. Next negative point is dust. This camera is not weather sealed and it's also using a motorized zoom mechanism uh, to uh, zoom in and zoom out as well as when you turn on and off the camera. And the problem with that is that over time, the lens will suck up so much air and when you're shooting in dusty environment, dust will come inside into your lens and eventually it will end up on your sensor. And that's a problem for me as well. So right now I can only shoot maximum at f2.8. 
if I go on higher F stops like F4 or F5.6, then on my image, it will start to show up dust spots on the actual image. And that's a big problem for me. Also, this camera is a few years old already. It's not using the latest and greatest uh, processor inside the camera. And the performance when compared to my GX8 or my G85 is actually a little bit sluggish, especially when you zoom in and you zoom out and when you turn on and off the camera, you can start to notice that there's a little bit of lag. However, the good news is that there's a newer version of this camera, the LX100 Mark II. It uses a new sensor, 20 megapixel sensor that's being cropped to 16. And it also uh, mitigate the problem with the performance because it's using new processor inside the camera and makes it run faster and smoother and snappier compared to my older LX100. However, that camera, I don't think it really solves the weather ceiling problem as well as the dust inside the lens and the sensor problem. I think we're going to have to wait until LX100 Mark III maybe for that solution. So now I want to answer the most common question about the LX100. How does the LX100 compare to a micro four thirds camera like my Panasonic GX8, especially when I'm using a similar lens like the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8? To answer that question, I compartmentalize my micro four thirds mirrorless camera with my LX100 into different categories. If I'm casually traveling somewhere, photography and video is not the main purpose of my travel, then I will bring my LX100. It is just to photograph and record video casually. Just take a picture here and there, nothing really serious, just casual fun kind of uh, photography, as well as recording a little bit of B-roll clips during the travel. Then LX100 is the camera for that job. However, if uh, my needs for photography and video is more serious and specific, for example, if I need to use different kind of lenses during travel, if I need telephoto lens, wide angle lens, and so on, then I will most probably bring my dedicated mirrorless micro four thirds camera instead. When comparing the image quality of the LX100, it is a little bit different uh, compared to my GX8 because the GX8 is using 20 megapixel uh, sensor that is not cropped at all. And when it comes to this guy right here, I think the most comparable camera is my Panasonic G85, which is actually using the same exact sensor as the one inside my LX100. However, the G85 is not cropped while the uh, LX100 is cropped. And that cropping means uh, increased noise, as well as reduced dynamic range. And uh, it's a little bit noticeable when I compare the image quality between my LX100 and the G85. And now we're at the end of this video and I just want to mention some key takeaway points as the conclusion of this video. So yes, this camera is old. It's been released by Panasonic in 2014. I bought it in 2016, I've used it for more than five years and it starts to fall apart. This rubber thumb grip right here starts to come off. The rubber inside the lens also start to come off so it's falling apart slowly. However, it is still functioning perfectly. I can still take pictures with it, record video with it. So I'm still gonna hold on to this camera for a little longer. I just want to mention that I really enjoy using this little camera. This is my EDC camera for a few years already. And also this is my travel camera for quite some time when I don't want to do serious photography and video during travel. And it has performed wonderfully. However, because of the pandemic situation that's been happening around the world, I don't travel as much again and I don't really bring this camera out again and, you know, put it into my work bag and uh, photograph and take a picture and uh, record video like I used to using this camera. This camera has been kind of neglected and I just put it on my drawer and it's just sitting, gathering dust, not doing anything at all. Maybe sometimes I still use this camera to record B-rolls of my YouTube videos and maybe a little bit of uh, taking picture of the thumbnail for my YouTube video as well. But you know, uh, many years ago, the way I used this camera is just to 
uh, you know, have a tool ready at all times in my hands so that when I'm inspired, then uh, I have something in my hand to record the moment, to take a picture, to record a video, to make something, to create something, and then come back home and enjoy the result. And I want to be inspired like that again by this camera. So maybe in the next few days or maybe in the next few weeks, I will start to bring this camera out more often with me again. What I'm trying to say is that if you have an old camera like my Panasonic LX100 that you haven't used in a long time and you want to rediscover and become inspired by that camera again, take it out, try to photograph something or record video of something, try to make it as beautiful as you can, get inspired and take some pictures or video, go back home, enjoy that picture or video that you take and reignite your passion with that camera again. So that is all for today's video. I hope that this video has been useful for you. Please comment down below. Do you have any old camera that you haven't used in a while, but you want to rediscover again and use that camera again? Also, if you have any question about this camera or anything in this video or anything really, just comment down below and I will try my best to answer. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below. It will really help me a lot to motivate me to keep making these videos for you. Alright, thank you and goodbye.